the quality of a given puzzle. And that, I think, is the, the hard question here. Um, so how do you mention, uh, measure the quality of a potential puzzle? I mean, apparently there's things you want to avoid. How do you measure them? And, and how do you say which things you want to avoid are more important than others? Um, right? So these are where things we wanted to avoid. Maybe I can measure the distance between uh, two curves or the angle between two curves that intersect or the distance between two uh, intersection points in the arrangement. Um, but for this to make sense, you need thresholds. You may need somehow weighted penalties if you have multiple things of, uh, of this type. And how do you turn this into a single uh, quality measure for the whole puzzle? Uh, I think that that's very unclear. Um, yeah. So that's uh, 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 one thing we did. You could think, of course, of alternative ways to generate curved nonograms um, instead of using these uh, Bejet extensions. I mean, so this is a puzzle um, which consists of just a single uh, uh, curve that follows somehow the shape of a flower. Um, there's many uh, interesting uh, uh, one-curve drawings of animals by Picasso, for instance. Uh, is that something you could uh, generate automatically? I have no idea. Um, but it leads to interesting and nice-looking puzzles. Uh, this is another puzzle which I made. Um, this one is based on tiles. So here you have uh, an underlying hexagonal grid, and in every hexagon, uh, I put a tile, which uh, has six ends of curves going out to the six edges of the tile, and they can cross in different ways. And then by using many of these tiles, I can tile the whole puzzle, and you get uh, a curve arrangement like this, which uh, has some obvious advantages. So it will uh, never create small faces, uh, and all the angles are nice. All the faces are of similar sizes. It does have lots of self-intersections. So that's uh, uh, something you could, of course, also try to avoid. Um, but yeah, can you generate such an arrangement for a given picture such that uh, the picture fits well in there? I think it's something how, somehow between, in between the grid approach and the free curve approach, which might be uh, worth investigating. Um, yeah. So uh, that's, I think, no. yep, that's as much as I wanted to say about the curved version. Um, so to conclude, we can adapt uh, nonograms uh, to not use only slanted lines, but also curves. Uh, doing this will create even more uh, constraints and considerations and geometry to, to deal with, but it also gives more freedom. Um, so it's conceivable to avoid both triple intersections and self-intersections, which are um, things that make the, the puzzle conceptually harder. So I think that's, uh, that's promising. Um, it is hard to avoid curves that are multiply adjacent to the same cell. But uh, so this is another um, uh, thing what, that might cause confusion that you might want to avoid. I think it might be possible but uh, it becomes more difficult. Um, yeah, the, the question of how to obscure the image, uh, I think that's wide open. Uh, how do you even measure whether the output image is visible in a set of curves? Uh, it's a very uh, uh, psychological question, almost. Um, and there is some algorithmic challenge in, in ev evaluating the quality of a, a candidate puzzle, uh, as well as, I think, in generating uh, more restricted curve arrangements. All right. Um, yeah, so maybe to uh, conclude, I showed you some uh, pictures, uh, uh, some puzzles in the beginning that I wanted to pleach. Uh, I started with this. Uh, classical nonogram, and I wanted to turn it into this one uh, here. And now that you've seen the talk, uh, you can, of course, try to uh, see the solution to these puzzles. 
Uh, does anyone want to make a guess? Yeah? Sorry, you start. Ah, you start with the ten. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't want to go through the whole uh, solution process. I just want to hear the name of the picture. Uh, yeah. A pencil. Maybe. Yeah. A screaming face. Whoa. Yeah. A picture of a puzzle. <laughs> no, I have. I, yeah, sorry. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to uh, show you the solution now. Um, yeah. So I'm happy to see that uh, apparently the solution is sufficiently obscured uh, because it is, of course, a uh, cat. <laughs> uh, I mean, I showed the uh, puzzle of a cat in the beginning, so I thought I gave you enough hints. Um, all right, I think that's uh, it for my talk. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> and if there are any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. So the cat. Yeah, so the, that's interesting, right? So there's. Uh, some closed curves in this cat, in this puzzle, which don't have ends, so we cannot give clues for those curves. But it turns out that uh, even without clues for those curves, this puzzle is still uniquely solvable. Um, and that's, uh, 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 that's sometimes possible and sometimes not. So sometimes if you have too many closed curves, then it will not be possible to uh, make a unique puzzle anymore. Yeah, so that, that would be an option. You could uh, imagine giving, uh, writing the hints on the inside of the puzzle. Um, yeah, that's uh, something we didn't really uh, explore. Yep. Um, no. I mean, not, not in this puzzle. You could leave them out and you would still have uh, uh, the same um, solution. Uh, but you might want to add them because you have some places where there's many large faces where you, so you might want the density of curves to be similar everywhere in the puzzle. And that's something that's easier to achieve if you allow closed curves than if you don't allow them. It could, yeah. And, and in fact, it could be that uh, if I remove one of these closed curves, then the puzzle is no longer unique. That, that could happen. Yeah. Yep. And the mask you still have like the, the same example that you had in the house. Yeah. So there were like some sort of like and nice Yeah, good point. And I think the reason is that here I allowed the shape of the output image to change. So I, I changed some of the curves uh, such that the uh, the whole curve kind of has a similar curvature, which means that it doesn't follow exactly the outline of the input get, but it just stays sort of close to it. So I think that might be necessary, or at least it helps with ob obscuring the image. So uh, yeah, so if the puzzle is simple, then uh, you can do this in polynomial time because uh, in the process of solving the puzzle, you will either reach the solution and then you know it has a unique solution, or you will get stuck, which means there could be two cases: either it has no solution or it has multiple solutions. Um, but uh, you don't really care because you just want to know does it have a unique solution uh, uh, or not. Um, no, no, sorry, so sorry. I should say, uh, I, I, and, and yeah, and I say the wrong thing. So it either has no solution, or it has multiple solutions, or it has a solution, but it's not a simple uh, uh, nonogram. 
And so if you're trying to find a simple nonogram, then you don't care which of the three it is. Uh, and, and so you just stop. If you want to know whether it's unique uh, also for non-simple polygons, well, then that is NPR. So, so this is polynomial because you simply perform the solution process and either you get to the solution um, or not. And if not, then it's either not simple or it doesn't have a unique solution. I think uh, quadratic, but I have to, uh, uh, I would have to check. Yeah, I think so. More questions? Yeah. Uh, one thing more, I was wondering if you also use this formula constantly, that's how the people who produce these magazines to sell them, mm -hmm. how do you use they actually produce things? Because yeah. some people draft them in their head, right? And then some, some of them we also have in our sources as well. Yeah, it, it's Did interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, so I visited. Uh, um, Denksport uh, and uh, talk to some people who, who make these booklets. And actually, um, well, it depends on the type of puzzle, but for instance, there's uh, the connect the dots uh, puzzles where you're just given a sequence of points with numbers and you should connect them and that gives a, a picture. Those are hand generated by people in India. So, <laughs> so it's a Dutch company and, uh, and they say they make a selection of pictures that they would like and then they send them off in a whole batch to India and then there's people there who turn them into puzzles and send them back and then they get published. So yeah, there's, there's still a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot more handwork than you would expect. Uh, yeah. But is that because yeah. it's literally that hard to generate or is it actually more done Yeah, it, I think it's a combination. I mean, you, you so uh, generating something reasonable, I think is uh, not so hard, but if you really uh, want it to look nice and uh, uh, you want to pay attention to all the small details, then it's not so easy, uh, not so obvious how to generate. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, um, uh, I mean, also my experience is that uh, uh, handmade puzzles are, are just of better quality than, than generated. Okay. Thank you for yep. your